Hey guys, how are you? Today we're checking out the USS Cairo and we're going to do a tour and check out the museum here in Vicksburg, Mississippi. In front of the USS Cairo. It looks like it was a wooden ship with cannons on top, maybe steam driven. Very cool. I wanted to capture the outside of it before we got too close that you couldn't really get the scale of it. All right, let's start our tour of the USS Cairo. Seven ironclads in 100 days. Look at this thing. That is so wild. Look at those massive cannons. It's like pirate land meets the meets the industrial revolution. If, if you just can you take it in? Wow. That is so cool. Seven ironclads in 100 days. Meet the deadline to pay $200 a day. James Ead had agreed to these terms for the construction of seven new ironclads. To speed production, a partner shipyard built three of the boats, including the one in front of you. Ead's shipyard built the other four boats. All seven boats were delivered 100 days later. So these were built for $2,000. That's insane. <laughs> the USS Cairo and her six sister boats were all named for towns along the Ohio and Mississippi River. Unlike wooden sailing ships used at the beginning of the Civil War, these new ironclads had steam-driven engines, armor plating, 13 cannons, and a top speed of 9 miles an hour. They were the backbone of the Brownwater Navy, a fleet designed to operate in rivers and shallow coastal waters. The more you know, right? Torpedoes and sunk. On December 12th, 19... I'm sorry, on December 12th, 1862, Cairo was part of a mine-clearing expedition on the Yazoo River. Her commander, hearing small arms fire coming from up ahead, steamed around the rest of the boats and into an unexplored water. Suddenly, explosions tore holes in the boat, including the ones you see in front of you. It sank quickly in 36 feet of water. No lives were lost, and the crew was recovered by nearby vessels. Who sunk the USS Cairo? Cairo? Some historians believe Confederates, lying in wait along the riverbank. Detonated the mines called torpedoes in the Civil War electrically. Other experts think the underwater mines were strung on a line across the channel. When the Cairo hit the line, her forward motion pulled the torpedo against the side of the boat where they detonated. So this thing, I guess that's where this came from. This piece of damage you see here. That was uh, by a, a mine, and well, it was on a mine clearing operation. Pretty wild, huh? I mean, it's so hard to believe that this was all reinforced with lumber and wood. Just, it's so impressive. So these are basically using the same type of cannons that you would see in forts like a Moro or in Savannah, uh, except they went ahead and put these bad boys on a boat, which means this thing moved very, very slowly. Because these aren't necessarily new cannons, and you saw the buy order for the one for $200 a day that we saw earlier. Well, it basically just stipulated modern tech put together oddly so you got those armor plates up there you've got probably two three hundred year old tech in these cannons right here which are very old and are sitting on wooden rails that's nuts all right let's learn about the chimneys the tall wooden stacks you see towering above the boats are skeletal reproductions of the original chimneys when Cairo sank, its smokestacks were visible above the surface of the water a sister boat the Pittsburgh knocked down Cairo's chimneys to hide the location of the sunken vessel Oh, very cool. So these are reproductions, obviously. <laughs> no one would have a wooden chimney. But very cool. You can see the damage. This was all pulled out of the Yazoo River, huh? Interesting. No smoking, climbing pets, eating or drinking. Oh my goodness, look at this giant uh, wheel that he uses to propel this thing. That is crazy. And look at this old school cannon. Huh. It's so funny to see a cannon like this, but it was meant for a boat. I mean, <laughs> this thing is like, you don't need any of this. You should have just built the foundation into the boat so that you wouldn't need any of this or the rails. Uh, look at this awesome locomotive here. You can still see the old steamboat design. You see, you got the giant gearbox up there. And that's what we paddle it. 
Okay, so this one is full steam ahead. Steam-driven propulsion systems like the one you see here powered riverboats churning up and down western rivers in the mid-1800s. Cairo's engines and boilers are among the oldest and best surviving examples of this type of machinery. It uses a steam drum, a long drum connected to the boilers, connecting steam and delivering it to the engines. Boilers, the five long boilers you see here left made steam powered for Cairo's engines. The boilers are heated with coal, 2,000 pounds an hour. Hot glass from the fire flowed through tubes running the length of each boiler. Heat from the gases turned water inside the boilers into steam. Piston, that's the piston right there. The steam drove two huge pistons, one on each side of the engine compartment. And then the oscillating arm, that's the oscillating arm. The piston pushed oscillating arms that turned the paddle wheel. At full steam, Cairo's engines could move the 888 ton gunboat at about nine miles per hour. So that is the second information. That is the paddle wheel right there. It's missing the boards that would go through the water. It's still very, very cool. So in the design of the boat, most of this would be empty to allow the propulsion. I just love the, the wood craftsmanship. You don't see that a lot. You don't see that at all in any modern vessels. And I was talking to someone who made a good point that these need to be on rails so that they can recoil after firing. That is a valid point. At the same time, uh, you had springs back in the 1800s and it still could have been implemented into the design of the boat. Uh, here are the boilers that we just learned about. And these are the wood, the woodwork that I say is rare, not found on many boats today. It's kind of like, reminds me of Noah's Ark, uh, that the attraction in Kentucky, very cool. These are the boilers, and this is the pilot house. Look up the circle of sloping iron plates overboard shielded Cairo's pilot house. From this expanded perch atop the upper deck, the pilot steered the gunboat and the officer on duty kept a watchful eye on the river. Orders to the engine room to change speed were sent using a signal board or shouting through a speaker tube. Caps then. The this powerful winch helped the crew haul heavy lines, move guns on the gun deck, and pull in the anchor. Steam from the boilers powered the capstan. In an emergency, this essential tool was turned by hand with wooden spokes inserted into the hub at the top. So this is the key transmission of the boat. It's very cool back in the day. I mean, it's really quite modern that each device has its own transmission, but I thought this is a really neat design, having multiple transmissions handled by a single gear. That's pretty sweet. A crew of immigrants. Had you stepped aboard the USS Cairo during the Civil War, the conversations may have surprised you. So many languages stroll the decks and you might have heard French, Danish, Russian, German, and accents from Ireland, England, and the Caribbean. Nearly half of the boat's sailors were immigrants. This group of men came from many walks of life. They were black and white. They were farmers, teachers, and butchers. Most had no sailing experience. They learned their duties on the job. U.S. born or not, these Union sailors were fighting for the survival of the country they called home. And then here is a photo of what a typical crew looked like. Very interesting, I guess. And then this looks like a, a roll call. Very nice. A ton an hour. Looking down to your left to see one of Cairo's restored firebox doors. Coal shoveled into the fireboxes, heated the boilers. Steam from the boilers powered Cairo's engines and drove her paddle wheel. A gunboat without steam could not move and was helpless if attacked. Ironclads kept fires burning and steam pressure built up even when anchored. For hours on end, coal heavers piled coal from storage bunkers into the fire room, and firemen fed the fuel into each boiler's firebox. Now, this is a very simple cannon design. It's a heavy duty cannon. This thing is can be used for Navy warfare easily. I see a lot of cannons and uh, this is much larger. To give you an example, if you want to look back at my previous videos in Savannah, Georgia, you will see them doing a cannon firing and the majority of the cannons they used were a lot smaller and were for anti-personnel. These things are meant to sink a ship. So what, what an amazing 1800s ironclad we have here. Truly a spectacle. We are here in Vicksburg, Mississippi, I believe. And this is the outside view of the ironclad.
plenty of firepower. Ironclads like the USS Cairo came equipped with 13 heavy cannons. It took a crew of six men to position the fire and fire each gun. As Cairo prowled the rivers north of Vicksburg, it could use its cannons to pound Confederate ports, battle enemy gunboats, and sink shipments of supplies to Confederate armies. So, believe it or not, even though we're in Vicksburg, Mississippi, this was mostly used against the Confederates, which I would not have banked on, but just goes to show you. And then the last piece is, interlocking iron plates like the ones you can see to the left of the cannon protect the pilot house and sloping casemates from enemy fire. Behind two and a half inch thick plates were white oak planks, 12 to 25 inches thick. When the iron plates took a hit, their wooden backing kept them from shattering. So that amazing wood and iron is actually pretty powerful. It can take a hit. Very cool. Last place. You look at your right beyond the walkway. Cairo's crew added those iron railroads rails to protect the boat's exposed forward casemates. So that was added by the Cairo crew. It didn't come on the boat. And uh, to give you an idea, this is the pilot house. We walked through here, we were here. This is the casemate. This is the part of the boat that we just toured. Uh, we can only see this part of the boat and we can only see this part of the boat. This is part of the National Park Service's US Department of Interior. As we get a little closer, you can take a really good look at these iron plates that were the armor. You do have quite some maneuverability with the both of these opening but the fact that it's on a rail still limits your angles now as we get to the back of the boat you see this is the this is the propulsion system so the propulsion system was protected so you couldn't fire and shoot at the propulsion system to disable the boat and then in the back here you had two more cannons so lord help whoever decided to sneak up behind this thing or is this where the torpedo hit? It's hard to say. It looks like it kind of comes out like a banana boat. And then it had a deck. Let's get a view from the back. This is the back of the USS Cairo. And now you can, I showed you the front, now I'm showing you the back. <laughs> I like how it's got all this open space down here. So it is built like a banana boat, just like I said, where it's got this giant bottom ex, uh, open area for the water to be propelled through this thing must have been awesome awesome to be in so steering an ironclad rudders on either side of the paddle wheel steered the gunboat fins were controlled by cables attached to the wheel in the pilot house well aimed enemy fire could cut the steering cable and disable the gunboat hold the front door so you're telling me that you designed this banana boat here which protects the propulsion and you did not put the rudder right there instead you put the rudder at the front of the boat and showed everyone where to shoot I mean, that's, you win some, you lose some, I guess. All right, this is the restored rudder. So I guess that's the rudder right there. And it, okay, never mind, I'm completely wrong. So the cables ran from the pilot house to that rudder and steered it. That's way better engineering, good job. And I could see how a well-aimed shot could take out the rudders if you shot in there. Paddle wheel, Cairo's 15 foot wide paddle wheel is made up of four 22 foot diameter spiders. The web-like iron arms and circles that form the spokes of the wheel, the paddles or buckets were probably simple wood planks. If damaged, they could be easily replaced by the boat's carpenter. There you go, there you have it. That's, so that's the USS Cairo here in Vicksburg, which if you've watched this whole video, that's the third time I've told you my location. So if you ever find yourself in this part of the country, I highly suggest you give this a look-sees. It's pretty cool. It's amazing that a lot of this was underwater for so long. Officers' quarters. Cairo's officers slept separately from the enlisted men. Officers' quarters were on the gun deck and either side of the paddle wheel, where they escaped the heat from the fire rooms and the boilers. That's got to be nice. Wheelhouse. The wheelhouse enclosed the paddle wheel. Wheelhouses were not armor plated. They were vulnerable to cannon fire from batteries atop forts and along high river banks. Very cool. And then I imagine this is the last plaque, or the last immediate pack, which is the National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark. I would have to agree with that. U.S. Cairo engine and boilers. 
Very nice. The Cairo is the sole survivor of the fleet of river gunboats built by the Union during the Civil War with the object of controlling the Lower Mississippi River. Designed by Samuel Pook and built by James D. Eads, the 175-foot ironclad vessels had 13 guns. The propulsion system is the only known early example of the widely used Western Rivers steamboat engine, characterized by multiple fire tube boilers with shared steam and mud drums and a two-cylinder non-condensing engine having a small bore, long stroke, and puppet valves. The engine was designed by A.T. Merritt with a 22-inch bore and 8-foot stroke. It developed, about 600, it developed about 600 horsepower and drove a sheltered paddle wheel of 22 foot diameter and 15 foot width. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers, 1990. The USS Cairo Museum is closed as it happens to be Monday, so sorry about that. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this historical tour of the USS Cairo. If you like content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. High up, higher up at the observation area of the USS Cairo, and uh, the skylights provided light for the gun deck and the engine rooms for the inspection of the paddle wheel. The frame of the skylight has been ghosted with the light colored glue laminated wood. During the southern summer, Cairo below deck was oppressively hot. The heat from the boilers worsened the stiffening conditions. The skylights and funnels vented some of the heat. Fresh air came in through the gun ports. Here's the view of the USS Cairo from atop the lookout above the museum. Just a very, very cool engineering landmark. If you find yourself in this area, be sure to stop by and check it out. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this tour today at the USS Cairo. If you like content like that, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'm always traveling. I'm always checking out new and interesting things. Take care and God bless. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the USS Cairo. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. This is the USS Cairo. It was built in the 1800s at a cost of $200 a day, and it was built in 100 days. It is a battle-clad ship, steam-powered, built for the north to come down to the south and fight the Confederates. It was sunk in the Yazoo River, and later would come and be fished out of that river to be known as one of the only surviving ironclad ships of that time and that conflict. Let's tour it today. Hog chains. Ironclad gunboats had long, flat bottom hulls to navigate shallow rivers. Loaded with heavy boilers, engines, and guns, the hull tended to droop at the end from uneven weight. This caused the center of the boat to hump up like a hog's back, called hogging. Hog chains kept the bow and stern from sagging. The more you know, right? This is the USS Cairo at sunset. What a beautiful vessel. That is how she would have looked with her, iron, with her armament on. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the USS Cairo. You know, here at BAM Media, we're always traveling and seeing and doing things. It would help the channel a ton if you would just give us a, a like and a subscribe or just leave a comment. If you have any uh, tips, tricks, advice, or if you want to know what part of the country I'm going to next, uh, just be sure to leave a comment. Thanks and have a great day. Hey guys, how are you? Today we're checking out the USS Cairo and we're going to do a tour and check out the museum here in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Guys, welcome to BAM Media. Today we are in Vicksburg, Mississippi checking out. Hey guys, welcome to BAM Media. I am here today in Vicksburg, Mississippi at the USS Cairo Museum. Hey guys, welcome to BAM Media. Today we are at Vicks... <laughs> Going in right now to that battleship USS Cairo. Wow. Can't wait to check that out. Guys, welcome to BAM Media. Today we are in Vicksburg, Mississippi checking out the USS Cairo. A Civil War, Revolutionary War relic. Let's, let's check it out.